Just last week, G7 featured this super cool website as their site of the day on Twitter. Right from the moment you land on the page, you are hit with this sleek animated counter followed by a really impressive landing page reveal animation. Super clean and super smooth. Based on the response to my recent landing page animation videos, it's clear that this kind of content has been especially interesting to many of you. So I figured this was another perfect example to explore and a great opportunity to build something similar using GSAP timeline. I gave it a shot and managed to build a version that gets very close, all using just some basic GSAP timeline instances. It's always cool to see how far you can go just by playing around with some basic CSS properties. In this video, I'll show you how to build this kind of intro animation using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I've also put together an XJS version of this micro project which will be available for pro members. If you want to access the source code for this and hundreds of other micro projects plus a fully responsive website template every month built with Next.js, React or vanilla JavaScript, you can check out the pro membership. The link is in the description. And if you find this video helpful in any way, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's begin by setting up the structure for the loader section. First, I'm creating a div with the class name overlay and placing two empty divs with the class block inside it. This will act as the animated dark background that slides out once the counter finishes. Next is the logo shown during the loading screen. I am splitting it into two words, each inside its own div with a unique ID. The text itself is wrapped in h1 tags. I have added a span around the first word so we can apply some shared styling later. Below that, there is a simple divider, just an empty div for now, which will style later using CSS. Then comes the spinner that appears at the bottom of the loading screen. It's wrapped in a container to make positioning easier when we handle the layout in CSS. Following that is the counter. It's made up with 5 sets of digits, just like the original website. Each set inside a div with the class count and each digit is wrapped in a separate div with an h1 tag for the number. I am hard coding the values for this tutorial but you can easily make it dynamic with javascript like we have done in some previous videos. That wraps up the loader, now onto the main content of the website. All of this is placed inside a div with the class name container. First, there is a hero image section which includes an image tag. This will serve as the background image for our hero area. Then we set up the navigation bar, it's split into three columns, the logo, the nav links and a button. The logo is just a text link, the nav section includes a few placeholder links and the button contains a cart icon. Next is the header section, I have wrapped the hero text in a div with the class hero copy and each line of text is wrapped inside its own div with the class line. This includes two lines with h1 tags and a third line outside the hero copy that holds a paragraph tag. Wrapping text elements in a line container gives us more control when animating just so we can apply clip path on the parent container and transforming the text itself during the reveal animation. Lastly, we have the call to action section at the bottom. It's split into two parts, the label and the icon. The label is a simple paragraph and the icon container holds an arrow icon. That's it for the HTML structure. Let's move on to the styling. We'll start by applying a global reset. This clears out default margin and padding and sets box sizing to border box. Next we define the base font for the entire page using the font we just imported. Then we move on to the image styles. All images are set to take up their entire containers with object fit cover to maintain aspect ratio and fill properly. After that we style the h1 headers. These are centered given a large font size and styled with white color and a lighter font weight. For any h1 that includes this span, we apply a different font and make it italic. Next, we tackle some shared styles for the link and paragraph tags. Both are styled with uppercase text, smaller font size, white color and smooth rendering. Now onto the layout, we have wrapped the entire page inside a container div. This container fills the entire viewport, hides overflow and positions content relative for layering elements later. The hero image section is absolutely positioned to fill the entire screen and placed behind other elements using the index. Now let's set up the navigation bar. The nav is placed at the top of the page, spans the full width and uses flexbox to align items horizontally. It includes some padding and spacing between items. We divide the nav into three parts using flex set to one for the logo, one for the links and one for the button. 
the logo is a simple text link styled with a bolder font and slight text transformation. The nav links are centered and spaced using flex cap. The button is aligned to the right and styled as a circular white background with a centered icon. Next is the header section. This is a full height flex container vertically centered with spacing between each line of text. It is where we'll display the main hero messaging. Then we have the call to action section. It's positioned at the bottom center of the screen with a white background, rounded corners and inner padding. We use flexbox to align the contents to the right. The label inside it is centered both vertically and horizontally using transforms. The icon beside it sits in a circular dark background. Now let's cover the loader styles. The loader takes up the entire screen fixed at the top layer using Z index. The overlay inside it is set up as a flex container to hold the two dark background blocks side by side. Each block fills half the screen with a solid dark background. Then we move to the intro logo. It's centered both vertically and horizontally using transforms. And the words are spaced slightly apart. Each word is styled individually. Below the logo is the divider, its vertical white line placed in the center initially scaled down so we can animate it later. Next is the spinner, its center at the bottom. And styled as a circular element with a subtle white border. We animate it using simple keyframe rotation. Now let's define the counter section. It's also centered in the middle of the screen. Each count is made up of two digits. For the digits, we are using a serif font for a contrasting style here and giving them a large font size for visual impact, just like the original website. Before animation begins, we set all nav and CT elements to be hidden off screen using transforms, just so we can animate them in smoothly later. We apply clip path to all animated text elements like lines, labels, words and digits so they can be revealed with a masked effect. Each text element inside is translated downward initially so it can slide into place during the animation. The logo words animate from opposite directions to create a nice reveal. The blocks are also set up for clip path based reveal as are the divider and the hero image. Finally, we add responses styling. At screen widths below 900 pixels, we reduce the heading size and hide the nav links. We also expand the CTA width to take up more horizontal space on smaller screens. That wraps up the CSS part of this project. Let's move on to the animation part next. Let's begin by importing GSAP and the custom ease plugin. We register the plugin so we can use it later in our animations. Then we define a custom easing curve called hop. This curve gives all the animations that cool easing effect for our transitions. Next, we wait for the DOM to load before running any animations. Inside the DOM content loaded event, we create a new GSAP timeline. This timeline starts with a slight delay and uses our custom hop ease by default. Now we target all the counter elements on the page. Each counter contains a group of digits 
We loop through them and animate the digits one by one. First, we slide each digit into place from below. We stagger the animation so the numbers appear in sequence, not all at once. Then we slide them up and out again with a stagger. This gives the effect of counting a really smooth number reveal. Next, we fade out the loading spinner. This signals the end of the loading state visually. After that, we animate the logo text, both words at once. Each word slides into position from its initial offset. Then we animate the divider. We scale it vertically to create a growing line down the center. Once that's done, we fade the divider out with a slight delay. This gives us a clean transition before revealing the site content. Next, we animate each logo word again, this time sliding them out of frame. The first word moves down and the second one moves up. As they leave, we trigger the background blocks to animate away using clip path. Each block clips upward, revealing the page behind it. We stagger this so the blocks disappear one after the other. At the same time, we scale down the hero image to its original size. This gives us a soft zoom out effect as the page comes into view. Then we reveal the navbar and hero text. These elements slide upward from their hidden starting positions. We use a stagger here too, so the lines appear with a cascading motion. Finally, we animate the call to action section. The CTA container and the icon both scales into view. We also stagger these elements slightly. Then we animate the CTA label, a simple paragraph so it slides into place. That wraps up the animation sequence. The entire flow takes us smoothly from loading screen to the main content, just like the original website. You can pick delays, durations and easing to fit your project's tone. That was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.